All right. So now we are going to drive the equation for the Ohm's law, which we know V equals to I times R. And it appears so simple, but we are going to learn how do we come up uh, with something uh, so small, so powerful. Uh, so let's look at some of the basics and uh, concepts behind this equation right here. Okay, I want you to think of a wire, okay? A wire that has a length L, uh, represented by L. Uh, this whole thing represents the area, which includes the radius, uh, length, uh, so that's the area of cross-section of that wire. It has two terminals. I'm going to connect this wire with a battery. Okay, so this is the positive terminal over here. And then the negative terminal is connected to over here. Okay, all right. Now, when the current starts flowing in the wire, uh, because I have the positive terminal connected here, so these are the positive charge carriers that will be uh, rushing trying to get to the other end of the uh, of the terminal and then they actually flow in the direction of the electric field uh, uh, next lecture is going to be on electric field and magnetic field so just uh, stay there with me for what you need to know here that if you have positive charge carriers um, the electric fields around them is such that they are going to push charges away from uh, them. So the positive charge carriers are going to flow in the direction of this electric field that you see over here. And then the average velocity is expressed as V. You know, that's the average velocity at which these charge carriers will be moving. Sometimes it's also referred to as the drift velocity. And also, the number of charge carriers are represented by N, okay? That's the number of charge carrier concentration, okay? So, from this piece of information, what we learn is that electric current here, electric current is actually a function of number of charge carriers times the area of cross-section of the wire, which is A, times the charge on a carrier. Remember, you know, that charge is how much? Uh, electron or carries a charge of uh, 1.602 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulomb and one way to understand what charges like everything uh, that exists in the uh, on the planet any matter has a has a mass volume density similarly these carriers that you see they carry a charge um, and times the velocity okay so that's the magic equation right here and i'm gonna say this is my equation one okay this is my equation one and i can write it down here again uh, that's the Carrier concentration here in the equation N represents carrier concentration. You have uh, A, that's the area of cross section. You also have uh, Q, which is the charge. Okay, and then we have V. Um, which is basically the average velocity or drift velocity, okay? Okay, so that was, uh, that was it. Now we're going to move on to the next part, which is the Coulomb's force. What is Coulomb's force? It's also referred to as electrostatic force, and that uh, Coulomb's law, that suggests if you have the like charged particles say you have positive charge they are going to repel each other correct they are going to repel each other if you have the opposite charges they are going to be attracted towards each other and the closer they are the more stronger 
electrostatic force will exist between them. So the question is, what would be the, an equation for us to find out the force exerting upon those charge carriers that are moving here in this wire, as you can see over here? Well, that is represented by this equation over here. Force equals to Q times E. Remember, Q is the charge and E is the electric field over here. Electric field. And again, I'll explain electric field in the next, next lecture. But whenever you have a charge carrier, say you have this charge carrier over here, there will be a space or region around this charge carrier where there will be an electric field. Okay, so if any charge carrier comes in close proximity within this field, uh, it will be repelled because you have positive here and you have a positive here. They will be, uh, and the electric field lines will be pointing away from the positive because there's a repelling effect. Okay, so that's, this is your electric field right here for this charge carrier. The more denser the lines are, uh, the more the strength of the electric field is, okay? Uh, now, you can also think of this equation as F equals to MA, that represents the second law, Newton's second law. So for any free falling body that has a mass uh, M, uh, the acceleration to the gravity would be 9.8 meter per second square. Uh, that is going to be the f force exerting upon uh, an object uh, free a uh, free falling body in a in an air okay so similarly over here the carrier they don't have a mass they have a charge okay and the acceleration to the gravity is uh, replaced by the electric field okay because that's where the charge carriers are present and that's what they interact with now let's move on to I'm also going to say this is my equation two okay let's move on to the third which is the velocity of the charges. Now velocity of charges or the drift velocity is actually directly proportional to the force. The more force being exerted, the more uh, fast they travel. Okay, so velocity will be directly proportional to the force. To the force and also it is expressed by this equation right here. V equals to mu times E where mu is the mobility, okay? In other words, the agileness or the ability to, for the electron or any charge carrier to move from one place to, to another, okay? Uh, and E, you know, is the electric field over here, okay? That's the electric field. And say this is my equation three. Now let's move on to electric field. I just explained er uh, earlier, you know, for any, uh, carrier be it positive or negative there's going to be some electric field around it you know uh, and these are electrostatic charges so they're not moving but they would be a force um, that would be between the two charges when they come close okay within the electric field okay it's measured as volt per meter so that's a very simple equation right here e equals to v over l remember v is the voltage uh, here uh, and then uh, that's the length of the wire um, so that is done now and, and maybe I can say okay this is my equation for there are two more things that we need to uh, get equation for and then we will start working on how we can drive uh, and come up with Ohm's law equation V equals to IR resistivity what is resistivity it's kind of a resistance, right? And a fundamental property of a material that quantifies, okay, how strongly it resists or conducts electric current. So you are, you know this formula right here, R equals to rho L over A, uh, where rho is basically the resistivity, okay? It's the resistivity and it is measured in ohms per meter. L is the length of the wire and A here is the area of cross-section. Uh, and conductivity is basically uh, opposite of uh, resistivity. So if you rho uh, sigma is your conductivity, that's the symbol we use for conductivity. 
is actually inverse of the resistivity so it's one over rho okay um i can yeah i think maybe i can just leave it over here for now uh now what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna pull my equation number one from equation one let's go back let's go back uh what was the equation one this was the equation one right i'm gonna change the color here so this was my equation one i equals to n times a dot q dot v okay i equals to n times a times um times what was it q times v okay all right q times v now what is v here v is the velocity which is expressed as mobility times electric field okay so let's put that let's re replace the velocity with that so i get what n dot a q dot mobility times electric field okay what is e in this equation e is the electric field and here's the equation for the electric field that is v over l okay let's replace e with v over l in the equation here n dot a dot q dot mu dot v over l okay remember this v is the voltage it's not the velocity which was the case over here so i'll just write v average here okay now let me rewrite this equation over here i equals to n dot a dot q dot mu dot v over l if i rearrange this equation right here and write it such that v equals to i okay dot l dot l over a q n mu okay so just after rearranging i get something like this what i want you to focus over here this part of the equation okay this part of the equation what is this thing right here if i say this equals to resistance would you believe me okay let's see let's see the magic here now okay now remember that r equals to rho l over a okay this equation right here okay i can also rewrite this equation as l over a dot conductivity remember conductivity is one over rho okay so these both will be equal right uh, i can write it either this way or this way both forms are pretty much uh, okay and also this conductivity is actually equals to q charge times n times mu and it is expressed in siemens per meter okay so your conductivity which is inverse of the resistivity also equals to charge times n times mu okay which is the mobility and is the number of carriers in q the charge carried by the carriers so if i replace the sigma which is the conductivity in the equation above with this right here so i get a dot q dot n dot mu okay so if i look at this equation this is exactly what i have over here correct right this is exactly what i have over here and this is basically the resistance so if i have to rewrite this equation it will boil down to v equals to i times r and that's what we refer to as ohm's law okay have you ever wondered the simple equation but there's so much behind it right now i want to just give you one quick analogy to understand individual parameters in this equation what voltage it's what current is and what resistance is so let's look at this analogy over here okay all right so what is ohm's law the ohm's law is the potential difference across an ideal conductor again uh, against an ideal conductor 
and it's proportional to the current through it okay uh, v equals to ir v is the potential difference between the two points and includes a resistance r uh, and then okay all right let's see you have this graphic right here say this is tank one over here you have this tank two over here if you notice the difference between the two tanks is this tank has this pipe which is thicker than this pipe right here okay so the thickness of this pipe could be referred to as the resistance as can be seen this is a thicker so it has a less resistance one ohm and this has the resistance of two ohms means the thickness of this pipe right here is twice as much the thickness of this pipe right here okay maybe i can change the color over here now also if you look at the amount of water the volume of the tank over here and also over here this volume represents the voltage okay the amount of water being held by the the tank itself okay and what is current then well current is the flow rate of the water okay so assume that you have water in here because the thickness of this pipe is more compared to this one right here the flow rate is going to be more that means the current is going to flow more and that's what it say 1m and because the thickness is twice as big as this one right here so the current flowing here will be half of what you have over here because you had 1m so this will be 0.5m okay so here's a quick analogy over here and you probably have seen this graphics it's funny but it actually that's what it's happening so this is resistor right here for you okay this is the voltage right for you and this is the the current right the resistor they love current they want to grab them right they don't want to let them go and the voltage just keep on pushing these charges because they you know like to repel and they keep on doing that uh, and that's how things work uh, in the electrical world now uh, why it's important to know Ohm's law because it's one of the best troubleshooting techniques so anytime you know something goes wrong say you have a short circuit the first thing you do you take up your current readings or voltage reading if any of those exceed that you may think that something went wrong with the resistance because you know V over R uh, will give you these uh, you know information on the current and if current is you know higher higher than what you were expecting and maybe something went wrong with the insulation the resistance was not okay so it's a very critical part of the uh, electrical engineering and as we do more and more circuits analysis we will keep on implementing Ohm's law I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching bye